Welcome back to the Angler Journey podcast for another episode of celebrating success, embracing failure, and inspiring the entrepreneur inside of you. I'm your host, Emily Frenzen, and today I have the pleasure of welcoming Wesley Walk into the studio. Wesley and his family recently started their farm to table beef company, High Ridge Beef, during the pandemic. This business officially started when the pandemic first happened and it could not have been more timely. And Wesley is going to talk about that in this episode today, along with lots of great tidbits about working in a family business and starting before you are ready. So Wesley, welcome on the podcast. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about where you're from and your major. Yep, so I'm Wesley Walk. I'm from Hay Center, Nebraska. I grew up on a farm and ranch there. And I am a senior majoring in agricultural economics. Rock and on. I have a minor in the angler program. Oh, program yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Super cool. So tell us just an overview of what the business is for our listeners. For those who don't know, what is High Ridge Beef? Yeah, for sure. So I grew up on a farm and ranch, like I said. And uh, part of our cattle operation is we sell beef directly to consumers. This was started in the pandemic, like you mentioned. So mm-hmm. High Ridge Beef is basically the sector of our cattle operation that focuses on delivering beef directly to different customers and like that and things. Um, so we sell holes, halves and quarters, and then we also sell individual cuts too. Awesome. So how did the business start? Yeah. So we've always sold beef directly to people, um, or at least like my mom would, um, like growing up and things like that, but it was mainly just to like close families and friends and things like that. Um, but then once the pandemic started, you know, Mm -hmm. people couldn't go to work, places were shutting down and that also included processing facilities. Right. And, uh, so the place where we usually deliver beef to, they told my dad, he was like, I can't tell you if or when we can start accepting your cattle. So that kind of left us with a feedlot full of cattle where it's like, we have nowhere to go. Yeah. So I guess we just kind of put two and two together. We were like, this is a really great chance to share our beef and share our family history and our story and our product with other people. And uh, so we started, you know, booking appointments like that, delivering beef to the processor. And uh, our main goal was just to get rid of our cattle herd because, you know, you have um, cattle in a feedlot Mm -hmm. for a whole summer. Like, and I know there's some people in other states who had to start euthanizing them. And that's something that we did not want to do at all. So absolutely. I guess it, I guess that's what it started from. (laughs) Yeah. Problem solving at its finest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where does the name High Ridge Beef come from? So I remember my brother and I were texting because, well, like when I was a freshman or sophomore, I saw all the upperclassmen who had businesses and things like that. So I always kind of had an idea in the back of my head of like, what can I use for an angler project? Like what's what's a need I could find and fill that. Um, And so when this opportunity came up, um, you know, I, I sort of was thinking about the whole direct to consumer beef thing. And so just like what I was sitting in my room, just thinking about different random names and things like that. Uh, we have a precinct or I guess that's just like the sectors of accounting mm-hmm. and things like that, um, where the original walk homestead was and the sector precinct was called High Ridge. Oh, okay. And so I just put two and two together and called it High Ridge. That is so awesome. (laughs) History in the name. Yeah, it's catchy for sure. It needed to be separate from Walk Limousine, Walk Farms. So we just kind of rolled with it, I guess. Yeah, totally. That's super awesome. So what is the why behind the business now that you've been running for over a year? What is the purpose of the business? Yeah, I think first and foremost, for a lot of my family, it's our connection back to the farm Mm -hmm. in a sense, at least that's the why for like a lot of us. But in terms of the need that we help fulfill for other people, um, a lot of consumers were wanting more food food security. They wanted to know where their food comes from. They wanted to put a face with the the producer. And we also just want to provide lean, high quality meat that comes from Southwest Nebraska. Yeah. We have a, you know, we're, we try to be good stewards with our animals. We have, uh, we've been really blessed with some great land that's that's great for Mm -hmm. for running a cattle operation and so i guess just utilizing what's been given to us too is another big why behind the business totally totally i want to talk a little bit about your family being so involved in the business and that starts with your family so tell us how many siblings you have and i want to hear what it was like growing up in the walk house (laughs) (laughs) oh man um so yeah i have four older siblings um lance alex larissa and andrea Lance is 10 years older than me, and then um, it's two years until Alex, two years until Larissa, two years until Andrea, and then I'm four years later. Awesome. And um, Lance, Alex, and Andrea are all married, and so 
<laughs> there's a lot of people who are involved with the operation. Yeah. But I guess growing up, um, I, hmm. I don't want to say it was really chaotic. It was actually pretty calm for when I was growing okay. up. Because, you know, you have four older siblings who've, you know, can take care of the youngest. My parents were seasoned veterans by the time, you know, I was coming along yep. and everything. Um, I mainly was like mowing the lawn growing up. Yeah. <laughs> and then as I got a little bit older, I, I started getting plugged into more of like the cattle farming mm -hmm. or cattle operation and farming yep. and things like that too. But yeah, I guess that's kind of a quick overview of my yeah. family anyway. Totally. And now everyone kind of has a little hand in the business. All of you are involved, correct? Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy how all of that works out because... I mean, I, I'd like to consider my whole family entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who all have jobs and they're busy and, you know, they have all the kinds of other things going on. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy to think of how it's all come together, mm -hmm. I guess. I, I don't know. I, I always like to make the excuse that I'm too busy in college sometimes, but like I have nothing compared to my wow. family for how busy they are because yeah. um, like my brother, he has a kid and, you know, my parents have a whole other farming operation that they're dealing mm -hmm. with. All my, like my brother-in-law is a cop and like my other siblings all have jobs and they all still make the time to invest yeah. into the business. That's awesome. That takes a lot of intention to be able to do that with your time and use it yeah, well and for purposefully sure. for mm -hmm. sure. So what did you want to be when you grew up? Did you have any idea that this would be where you are? <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, when I was younger, I actually wanted to, I don't know what the term is, but it's like an animator person who works on animated films. Oh, yeah. So I was always thinking I could either do that or be a comedian, but there's not <laughs> really a, a track for that, I guess, going into college. Yeah. So I don't know. Coming into, like, when I came to UNL, uh, I realized I wanted to be in the agricultural field, and I knew that that was a, you know something I could always picture myself contributing to, but... I, I'm not sure the whole animation thing is going to work out, but that's that's what I wanted to be when I grew up. Anyway. Yeah, that's awesome. And here you are. And here I am. In the beef biz <laughs> with your fam. Yeah. A semester away from wishing I was an animator. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm a stretch of grad. That's super cool. So being involved in this family business, I would love for you to share three pieces of advice for our listeners that you have learned thus far in being in a family business. What would you share with them? Your three best tips. Um, number one, I would say, it, I know it sounds cliche, but communication is a huge one. Each one of my family members, when this started, was in a different part of the country, wow. <laughs> in a different part of the state. So my yeah. parents were back home, um, Southwest Nebraska. Uh, me and my sister and my brother were here in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. My other sister was in a different state. Uh, my oldest brother was in Alaska. <laughs> That's wild. So, I mean, it was, communication was huge there because my yeah. parents were the only ones on the actual farm with cattle. Mm -hmm. So it, it took a lot of intentionality with, with whether that was um, using like Facebook Messenger or just texting or calling each other. Right. I guess it, it just takes a lot of effort just to talk. For sure. <laughs> so I, I think communication is the biggest one, having like clear expectations and um, I think another tough thing with running a family business is just like the whole who's in charge idea. Mm -hmm. So having those tough conversations, defining roles, um, that's just a huge part of any of it. Uh, I would also say just the idea of making time. Cause like I mentioned earlier, my whole family's busy. They're doing a million other different right. things. Um, I think, a lot of people can apply that to whatever they do every day too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you don't realize you might be making time for your phone or making time for a movie or something yes, like that. Yes, totally. So I guess just making time for mm -hmm. the things you want to invest in and contribute to because we all have the same amount of hours in a day. So yeah, I think that's yeah. my third tip is just, you know, if you really want to contribute to something, you have to make the time for it. You can't just expect, you know, the, you just can't expect it to pop up. Absolutely. Totally. I want to talk a little bit more about your second tip and hear how you go about having those tough conversations. Did someone in your family like lead those conversations or what did you do to yeah. determine those roles? So I guess a, a great thing about High Ridge Beef starting was it was the most that my family had like been able to talk in like years. Wow. Just because like I said, we were That's all over so the crazy. place. So, yeah, that makes I sense. I mean, there wasn't, other than the holidays, there mm -hmm. wasn't a lot of times we were getting together. Yeah. So 
I guess we we started just like meeting a lot more, whether that was over Zoom mm -hmm. or we had like an annual meeting, I guess, where we all got together and spoke. One thing we did was just evaluating our strengths and weaknesses and things like that and who could contribute the most in one specific area and who would be the best at that. Yeah. So my mom's really good at the whole uh, legal aspect side of things. Nice. So obviously she's a great fit for that. Yep. Um, my sisters and I do a lot of work with social media. So we form a social media committee. Mm -hmm. um, and then like I'm on a promotions committee. And then there's also a uh, individual bundles committee. So I don't want to say committees is the answer to like those tough conversations, but like um, assessing your strengths and weaknesses and then yeah. like, delegating those to where you can best express those, mm -hmm. I, I think is a big part of being able to navigate those tough conversations. And totally. I, I think just having them too, like just having people express their thoughts, yes. um, their opinions, things like that. Cause most people don't take the time to sit down and actually discuss those mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And part of it is just actually scheduling the time to do it. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. What is your favorite part about working with your family? Um, I think just getting to see them and talk to them more yeah. because, you know, being the youngest and having such a wide age gap um you know and they're all over the place it's really fun to get to work with them on a mm -hmm. daily basis because we we all came from a similar upbringing we hold similar values um i feel like there's just a lot of i don't i don't know if common sense is the right word but like everyone just i i guess they they're just really smart in the way they think. And uh -huh. so we can approach things from a really practical way. Yeah, and totally. Solve problems totally. You know, in, in a way that doesn't divide our family. And um, I think that benefits me in other areas of my mm -hmm. life too, just how to navigate those problems. And yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Super cool. So I want to talk a little bit about what it was like for you when COVID first happened in 2020. I was living at the fraternity here and wow. it was, you know, business as usual one day and then the next day, like everyone was just gone. Yeah. <laughs> so and I, you stayed here? Um, for a little bit. Okay. Um, I went back home and helped on the farm for, gotcha. you know, a couple of weeks yep. and then my job in Lincoln started in okay. about like uh, end of May or so. So I came back. Yeah. To Lincoln, <laughs> gotcha. Which was just crazy, but yeah. What was that like for you? Um, the whole process? Yeah, yeah. So I was still kind of in the same boat of I'm not on the farm, but I still want to try to help and mm -hmm. contribute to this. Um, I kind of made a lot of excuses of, well, I'm not back home. <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I might try to avoid maybe some of these areas. So it was really pushing me out of my comfort zone to try to yeah. help out in any way that I could where mm -hmm. I wasn't actually on the farm. Um, one of my main roles is just helping out with cattle work yep. and, you know, delivering cattle where they need to go and things like that. So I don't know, it, it was just really tough for me to make that effort when I'm not around the operation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you made it work. But we made it work. <laughs> Which I think is also really inspiring for other students or people who are at college anywhere to know that like they can still have this awesome vital role no matter mm -hmm. where they're at, you know, cause mm -hmm. looking at your siblings, they're in different places not necessarily close to home and still having ties to the farm operation, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess another thing that I kind of realized too, Engler had been preaching to me for years about you have to start before you're ready and yeah. you know, all you have to do is just start and then you learn as you go. And I would always just tell myself, oh, well, I don't know the first thing about selling beef directly to people. So I just kind of use that as an excuse not to do, do it. Yep. Um, but then, you know, when the whole world shuts down and there's a need that needs or the, a need that has to be filled, mm -hmm. then it's kind of like, okay, there's no better time to start than now. So yeah. one thing my mom always told us kids growing up was if you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. And so this kind of showed me that firsthand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it was nice because it did kind of seem like it was a perfect condition, but at the same time, it was like, it's not going to start unless we make it happen. Like it's mm -hmm. not just going to magically come out of nowhere. Yes, totally. And then you were off. That's <laughs> awesome. We off. Super cool. So I'm asking every guest this season to fill in the blank of this sentence. The pandemic taught me blank. What would you say? I think the, the value of community and using your resources, um, when you're here on campus, it can be tough to realize the different resources you have, like Angler, for example. Um, but when you get to that isolation that COVID brings, um, everyone's looking for a sense of community. They're looking for people to reach out to and to mm -hmm. have help them. And I think Angler did a great job of making sure that 
they were available. So yeah, um, yeah, the, the pandemic taught me that those resources are out there, like right now for me, like they're available. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, it's not like we just figured it out on our own. We talked to other people who sold beef directly. Right. We watched, watched YouTube videos on how to, mm-hmm. you know, sell beef. So I, I guess just utilizing your resources and, yeah. and seeking out those around you and finding a mentor to, to help you out along the way. Yeah. What do you think the future is of high ridge beef and farm to table as a whole? Because you are so self-taught. That's amazing. And it's so cool how like any entrepreneur can do that with YouTube and online, but also Angler clearly has resources available, but based on the last year and a half, what success have you seen come from the business? Yeah. One of, uh, one of the parts of our mission is just educating people to help change the way they buy beef in a sense. So a big part of our social media is showcasing our farm, showcasing how we raise our animals, Mm -hmm. um, and also providing a a quality service to our customers. So um, I guess uh, going forward, what we would like to see from, you know, anyone who buys beef is just like having that connection with the producer. And um, it's getting tougher and tougher (laughs) as we go on. But I guess, yeah, that's just our main mission is just to like, educate people and, for sure um you know tell their friends about where they're where where they get their food and things like that yeah but, <laughs> does that answer your no question? for sure i think that's awesome and i think it's amazing to think about how each of us as a human being has a story of our own and then when you talk about the food we eat that's a whole nother story in itself and it's mm-hmm. awesome to see the intersection of those worlds collide yeah. in farm to table I, I think it's awesome. Herd's beef has also changed a lot every year. So yeah. I guess just the way we went about things during the pandemic can kind of create a, a, a mirage, I guess, of how you want to go forward. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of adapting that you have to do every year. Yeah. So I, you know, it's not the same situation as there's no meat on the shelves. People need to buy beef from somewhere. Right. Like, you know, now you can go to high V and buy beef. So mm-hmm. I guess just trying to keep that connection with the customer. So they still want to buy from someone yeah totally totally so why or why not was the pandemic the prime time to start um well i guess it's just because we got pushed in uh, out of our comfort zone Mm -hmm. i guess it was like we have to do something yeah um i i think you know maybe we would have got started with something eventually if it wasn't for the pandemic but i i think that that brought about a sense of urgency and a bit more of a realization of what we have that we can provide to people. Yeah. So I, I think to answer your question, just a mix of the, the realization of the, the product we have and then also just the, the sense of urgency. Mm-hmm. Totally makes sense. Good stuff. So uh, this is a fun question about you personally that mm-hmm. I've also been asking everyone this season. What is a hill that you, Wesley, are willing to die on? Oh, man. Something that you feel pretty strongly about. I talked about it earlier, the whole making time thing. That's a big point I always try to say. Yeah. One thing that I have that I tell people in college is you don't learn by not learning. <laughs> I guess what that means basically is nobody was really born knowing how to do anything, whether that's, you know, starting a beef business or, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever it is you might be working on. Even if it's something simple like, wanting to play an instrument or just pick up a new hobby. I always just like make excuses for myself. Like, Oh, I, I don't know how to do that. But like, like I said, you, I don't learn how to do those things by not making the effort to learn. So mm-hmm. whether that's, you know, finding a mentor, um, finding other people with similar goals as myself, I guess just pursuing those different things um, and just getting started. That's, that's yeah that'd be my pick yeah biggest piece of do it and start it don't don't be upset that you're not doing something okay cool (laughs) like because that's just that's just making an excuse yeah good words of wisdom wesley i I guess (laughs) (laughs) super cool so in closing do you have any good jokes for us do you want to pull out your uh Uh, comedian side no that i i I buried the comedian side of me a long time ago i'm I'm more of a (laughs) More of a, a humorous person, okay, not cool. so much a, a jokester. I guess. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have any jokes in the back in my back pocket. Is what is what I mean to say. Okay, good to know. I do want to ask you where people can find you 
yeah, and yeah, buy from you. That's a big one. Um, so we have social media channels and we have a website. You can check out highridgebeef.com. Uh, find us on Facebook and Instagram. That'll take you uh, to our website where you can buy beef or you can buy gift cards for other people if you don't need any meat yourself. Yeah, I guess that pretty well sums it up. Check out our website. <laughs> awesome. Good to know. Thank you so much for your time, Wesley. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It was fun. Thank you so much for listening to the Angler Journey podcast. Be sure to subscribe, leave a review and share with a friend so we can keep building people, building businesses and building this community. If you listen to all of Wesley's episodes today, my hope is that you were able to take away something valuable. There were so many great tidbits, whether it was about lifelong learning, starting before you're ready or finally pursuing the idea that you've always had. Hopefully Wesley's words sparked a flame in you to do the thing that you have always wanted to do.